well, welcome everybody and um, wonderful to be back with you and especially welcome to those of you who are new and we are taking the theme of arriving arriving in this body and of course that's what happened when we were conceived and born but in my experience it's something that we need to do on a daily basis and any time during the day when you feel you're getting a little bit out of yourself or you're feeling disturbed in some way come back and arrive in this body <clears throat> we're going to start uh, as we often do on the floor and just get in touch with the whole of the back body and begin to feel how we can get more space inside and when we have more space we have more breath and since we're going to spend a little more time on the upper body and that encompasses big area of the lungs and so we will really be working to find more space for more breath. I tend to, to focus on particular parts of the body um, because I feel many people have an asana practice but um, it's also important to just deal with the little details in the body, the parts that tend to hide because they're too tight or too painful or too traumatized. And the asana becomes more important than those little parts of us that don't dare to show themselves. So by meeting little places in the body and helping them to feel that they are really accepted and that we can connect deeply with them and live in them, then you have more space, more freedom, and it doesn't matter what you do with it. Um, you can do all the asanas you want with it because it will help you or just in your daily life. So that will be the focus. Let's lie on our back. And because we're going to roll along the little balls, as I've done with you many times before, for those of you who are new, um, this works really well. It's just two balls. They can be tennis balls or rubber balls. Tie them quite tightly in a sock so they stay fairly close together. And they act as a um, as pressure point because you can put the weight of your back on them and roll on them. And so they need to be fairly tightly tied together. Come right down to the bottom of your mat. If you start with your feet fairly near to your hips, but a little bit apart and open the heels a little wider, that will enable the back of your pelvis to open out. So, and the whole of your back body also, because we want to get right in along the spine. But we're going to start <clears throat> just putting the balls under your head. And just see if that gives you an immediate sense of relief and the possibility to relax. If it doesn't, then you have to try a different place, maybe a little further back, maybe a little further in. After you've done this many times, you'll know exactly, you just put the balls immediately in the perfect place and you'll find that your eyes relax, you begin to drop inside 
begin by simply lying down like this, you begin to really arrive in this body. And what it's enabling is for your neck to relax. So if you feel your neck isn't quite relaxed, just lift your head with the balls and move them a little further away and see if that helps you to feel that the neck muscles are now really long and soft and relaxing. We're going to focus on widening out the back. So by rolling along the balls, we meet the place where all the muscles are attached to the spine bones. And that's where we hold a lot in our back. We hold in fear, we hold in expectation, we hold in anticipation, uh, we hold when we strive to go forwards, and we forget that the back body is our home. Can you imagine what it must be like for a turtle? It comes out and then something scares it maybe, or it's tired, it just goes back inside. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to do. Lift your head up and put the balls near the base of your neck and hold your head in your hands. You can make a little basket or a hammock for your head. Bring the elbows up towards each other. Let the knees roll towards the toes and you'll find the pelvis comes off the floor, but don't squeeze it. See if you can also feel that you lie in a hammock inside the back of your pelvis. Then you can roll up so nothing is on the floor except the balls and your feet. You've got your head up, you've got your pelvis up. So that makes a lot of weight and the weight will come down onto the balls on either side of your spine. And you see what you feel. Don't go too fast because you want to really get into the feeling. And sometimes there'll be a place that sort of speaks to you a little bit, might be a bit tighter. So you might want to stay there a little longer or roll back and forwards on it to help it unwind. And you just go in your own time Sometimes you get a little adjustment, a little, and that's always a nice feeling. And you go until you're almost at the bottom of the ribs, and then you can put your arms down, lift up a little bit, and roll yourself further into the lumbar area. That's where the spine is between the ribs and the pelvis and just lie down for a moment completely. I would keep the knees up because that helps the whole lumbar spine to open out and lengthen and it makes more space for all the contents of your abdomen, your belly. If you have your hands lightly resting on your belly, you might feel the breathing. And this is the most important place to keep open and breathing. Here we are somehow just in between what you could call the lower body and the upper body. So it's a sort of gateway but the lumbar spine suffers a lot and because we're upright most of the time on two feet and so the pull of gravity is down and it's an area which isn't supported like the thoracic spine and the pelvis 
So there's a tendency to sink down and many people have lower back problems. So we want to keep that mobile and open. Now what you can also do is just hold on to the back of your thighs, keep your elbows on the floor and you can lift your whole chest off the floor. So your pelvis is off the floor, just your elbows and your feet are on the floor. And you can roll a little bit around and see if the oh, any tight places or any way that you can get the feeling of a little more length and space in the lumbar spine. And then just try a nice deep breath and see if you can feel now, you can put your hands on the pelvis on either side and just roll from side to side to get that sense of coming out, out like a, a plant growing out of a pot. The pelvis is really the pot and there's a whole lot inside that needs to open up and have more space. You'll easily feel the breath with your hands, but see if you can drop deeper and feel the breath in the back. Imagine the balls are going to feel the breath. But ultimately, it's you living at a deeper level in your body and feeling the breath and the movements from the inside. And the breath moves in a very fluid way, so it's rather like water, maybe the tide coming in slowly. And perhaps you can feel the breath from the inside creeping around in the belly area, but really staying low down in the back. And you go further and you just find your own way to roll until you're on your, actually on the pelvis. If you come off the top of the mat, you might want to just move back onto it and replace the balls, they will now be on either side of the sacrum. And this is a lovely area to be, to arrive in your sacrum and feel, feel that, you know, sometimes I've read that in yoga, you have to keep your buttocks squeezed together so that the sacroiliac joints don't move. But that's very restrictive. And actually, the more you can feel that you can move in the back of the pelvis and loosen up the sacroiliac joints, the five bones of the sacrum that create that lovely triangle, they have all their little joints connecting to each other and connecting into the pelvis. So the movement won't be much, but it'll feel like a lot. And as your sacrum starts to feel more lively and <clears throat> part of you, part of the life in your body, it'll open up a lot. A lot more energy will flow and you have more fun. There's a lot of fun locked in the pelvis that um, we tend to restrict when we tighten. So anything you do is great. Going from side to side, pausing back, bringing the knees up, and just again, exploring, rolling, but watch because you'll tend to come up into your head and then sort of see your body uh, as an object. But we're looking to see if we can really arrive and be, be that, experience 
where the one side of the pelvis communicates with the sacrum. And just keep rolling around in that way. And take the balls out. Now notice what you feel. Try to be in that experience of feeling what is happening inside the body. Outside, you probably feel, yes, I have more space. I'm wider. I can spread out more on the mat. But now, what is the feeling inside? Because there's a whole world of experience inside your body. And that is actually where we need to go to find our true, what shall I say, our true sense of being, being alive. We need to be inside. And that gives us power not to be pulled out all the time into everything that is presented to us, everything we're told, everything we see. How can I stay? inside this wonderful creature, this body, which is longing to be lived in. So just for a moment, we will roll around a little bit and you can do this in your own way. Those of you who like to use the balls to get into a place behind the hip, they're always muscles that tend to tighten up in the back at the buttock here behind the hip, basically because we decided to stand up and walk vertical. The animals don't have that problem because their four legs are always moving like this and the muscles are designed for that. So if you have the balls underneath your buttocks and you move your leg up, you can usually find a sensation, a sensation of tightness. It's not pain, although some people call it good pain, because it's just dealing with a place that has been gripping. And you can move around to help it loosen up. Sometimes if you just stay and really feel that intense sensation. It seems almost reaching a point of unbearableness. But you breathe, you just stay, you watch it, you try to see it, what color is it, what shape is it. And you'll probably notice that the sensation is diminishing. So that means the tight muscle the taut tendon starting to open, starting to release, and you have more space. And so you will feel more alive and happier in that area. And then you take it out. And those of you who worked with me before will probably notice the nostril on that side feels more open and experiencing the breath because you have released this channel. And if that worked for you, then you try the other side. Sometimes it's so intense that you don't want to take both legs off the floor, so you just work by rolling a little bit around in and out of that tight place or staying with it. But if it's bearable, you can take the other leg up, which of course puts more pressure on it and demands even more focus and being there with it. So this is really being in your body because you're attending to something that is not very happy. It's tight. It's holding on. It doesn't want or cannot feel the light. 
And so from inside the body, you are slowly unwinding and opening and feeling, and breathing. Then on your feet, again, have the heels a little bit open, have the feet a little bit apart. Roll your knees. If you put your hands on your thighs, you can push a little bit, roll the knees away, and your pelvis is free. So now you can see how much freedom have you actually created in your pelvis and your hips. Just feel inside and just say to yourself, now I'm feeling into the left sacroiliac joints, or now I'm feeling into the right hip. So that you bring your mental awareness right down into this part of the body and it helps you to focus more. Otherwise, your mind wanders away, you have all kinds of thoughts going on, and your body's left in a sort of kind of stupid way, just wiggling around. So you could call it mindful moving or focus moving or just presence in a particular place in your body. This is a nice one, a rolling down with your, if you had a long tail, could you roll that tail down and then roll it up? And that will start the whole spine undulating. And then rest. We easily out and wobble them in and out just to feel some freedom in your hips. Feel the ankles wobbling. And now extend the heels away from you till they come off the ground. Feel the whole sole of the foot opening up. And then turn the toes towards the floor and so you feel a little stretching in the front of the foot. And you do that a few times. And as you do it, you feel more and more of that opening out like the sun beaming out and then closing down into the shadow and that other part, the top part of your foot opens up. But you can do it with your hands at the same time if you like to feel. But it's not mindless up and down. It's really feeling the expansion in the soles of the feet and in the hands. And then see, because now you're working right out into the extremities. And you feel from inside, inside your belly, inside your chest, and you feel that opening and closing, and then rest. And we did this on Thursday, but it's a very nice thing to do. I'm very interested in contact and how the body responds to contact. And this place here, it, it gets a little blocked up very easily, especially if you sit a lot. So just gently make contact with it. The area of the top upper thighs, around the pubis and the groin. And think of it as a warm, caring contact. And just notice what you feel in your hands. There may be some little bumps you can uh, feel with your fingers, the lymph nodes. There may be some tightness on the inner thigh. Just see what you feel. And then go inside. I know it's not easy, but see if you can go inside as if you were really in there feeling these, this thing coming from outside. And what is the sensation you have when you feel the hands 
moving from the inside. It takes a little while to wake up that awareness. If I think of a cat, and cats love contact and they love to be stroked. So imagine how it feels for a cat to be stroked. And the cat is inside itself feeling, ah, oh, that's so good. So see if you could be a cat inside your brain. Ah, that feels so good. And then you can speed it up a little bit. Ah. Then we're going to bend the knees, take your feet to the left side of the mat and roll over. And just bring and roll to the right. It will be made easier if I then just can say what which foot is where. So the left foot will be in front of the right knee. Now this is a lovely place. You can one thing you can do is really make contact with the right hip and the mat. So any tightness you have there, you can kind of just roll into that. But what I'm really interested in is this whole area, the upper body, the torso, and how we can open up spaces between the ribs and anywhere else to get more feeling that our, our house, our inner house, the body, allows us to move and feel and breathe. So if you twist, and have then both hands in contact with the ground. And you can just explore this in your own way. But just see how can how can you get a feeling of opening the spaces between the ribs. So one way is to stretch out like this. But you're inside your rib cage and you're exploring how you can breathe and open the spaces between the ribs and the contact with the spine. So very deep, lovely, warm breathing to open that side of your body. And you can also create a little resistance. You see, we have the resistance of the floor Resistance is one of our greatest gifts because only when we have resistance, we start to discover more of ourselves. So if you resist a little bit on the knee, you can get more turning and then you can work down into the kidney area between the ribs and the pelvis. And see, by moving and twisting and breathing, if you can begin to feel internally some warmth, some more of you emerge. And then come back. And just pause for a moment because you probably notice a very different feeling between your left side and your right. Hopefully you will have more sense of breath, more freedom, and you feel a little bit wider inside. You see, when we have confrontations and difficulties, such as our human nature, we have elevated the brain to such an extent, the front brain, that it thinks it can do everything. And the wonderful intelligence of the body gets uh, diminished and forgotten and often damaged. So 
So what you can feel in your body now, that's what matters. And what I was going to mention about when you have a confrontation or some big issue that comes up for you, the tendency is we jump up into our front brain and try to sort it out from there. And you may have noticed that it doesn't work. It just creates more confusion, more confrontation, and sometimes some not very nice experiences. So if we find, if we build up a habit of returning into our inner body and having created so much more space, there's plenty of room in there, plus we can ground ourselves if we're sitting through our buttocks and our legs, if we're standing through our feet, we will be able to stay present with a situation without it going all in all crazy directions. So this is, this is what I find is the most important thing is how, how does my practice actually affect my life experiences. And this is one of the biggest ones by coming more into the inner body and creating more space and more awareness, I have somewhere to return to when life gets difficult outside. So now we're going to turn and uh, do the other side. Uh, let me see. Yes, that will be your right leg coming over your left knee. And again, <clears throat> you now have left hip. If that's bothering you, just roll it a little bit. You see, you use the mat and the floor for all sorts of little bits of resistance to help you open further. And then we're going to turn. So this is really what is going on in, 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 a, in a twist, any kind of asana with a twist in it. But we're approaching it much more from the inside in order to feel how and where can I get a little more release and space between the ribs and the ribs and the spine. And then we reach out, maybe that helps, or maybe it's more helpful to have the two hands on the floor and breathe and widen. And everybody's different. So you have to find your own way this is the resistance using the leg. I can get now more into my right kidney area and create more space between the lower right ribs and the pelvis. And breathe and move. Breathing really means breathing. <laughs> really, and not just the idea of breathing, but really getting in there and feeling that because when you breathe in, you are soaking up energy. There's so much energy all around us. We have endless energy if we just open to it. There's energy in the earth. So opening up and breathing in and sucking in all that energy and feeling how part that's more of you inside, more of you that can move, that can feel, that can be present. And then come back. And just sit for a moment. Somebody asked me if I was to say one thing to someone who's never done yoga, um, how would they start? How would they start a yoga practice? 
I was sort of lost for a moment. And then I thought, of course, be comfortable. You must be comfortable when you start. After that, you can start to enter into uncomfortable places. But you must have a place of comfort to start in. So if this is uncomfortable, then sit up on a bolster or a block or whatever you like, even a chair. Sometimes you can only sit on a chair, it doesn't matter. So we make a little more space inside the body near the ground. And I know many of you have done this with me before, but it's never a problem to do it again. Just get your hands underneath one thigh, roll the inside down and the outside up, and at the same time, ease it out because you are taking your leg out of your pelvis so you have more space in the whole hip and pelvic floor area. When you've done that on one side, just close your eyes and feel because <clears throat> we have so denied feeling. I talk about it a lot. I feel sad, I feel happy, I feel broken hearted. I feel sick, I feel well, but all these more deeply subtle feelings inside the body, what has happened by that one movement of releasing the leg out? Plus you have opened up a lot of space in your lower pelvic area and your lungs and your chest. Then get your hands underneath the buttock, creep underneath till you find that lovely buttock bone. It's like a chair leg. And you creep your hands underneath it and the fingers rather, and pull it outwards and backwards. So diagonally backwards. And now see what has happened and what you feel. Because this is establishing a really powerful rooting and um, grounding so that the channel of energy on this side opens up. So what I'm finding is that the corner of my mouth on that side has started to go up a little bit. And I wasn't trying to smile or anything like that. It just was the outcome. The breath is more in this nostril and this whole area has slightly lifted. So then we do the same on the other side. Get your hands under the thigh, roll it in and down and lift it out and up at the back and then guide the leg a little bit out of the pelvis. It will only be a fraction, but it makes a huge difference. And maybe already you start to feel a little more stabilized and grounded and powerful on that side. So then you do the same with the buttock bone, get your fingers under and pull it diagonally backwards and outwards. So now where the legs leave the body, there's a little space. And that space is open to the earth underneath you. And the earth is constantly giving her energy upwards. So you have created or you have recovered the what is called the Ida and Pingala, the two essential channels that go up through the whole body. So you're now connected into the earth up through your body the space above you. And then all you have to do is come to the center and feel the same thing. That's the Sasumi channel, the Kundalini energy that needs to be connected to the center of the earth. 
to the perineum and allow it to rise and exit out through the center of the crown chakra. So you're connected with the space above you, infinite space and down to the center of our planet. Because we're such mental creatures, it's hard to stay with one sensation or one observation. We go buzzing off very quickly, but this is one place that is nice to meet every day and try to stay with it. If you like, you can use this little mantra that I've taught many of you before, I am sitting exactly over the center of the earth. Because the words tickle the front brain, brain, front brain loves words, so it grabs hold of the words, but in doing so, it has to experience. And so it's a way of getting your busy little front brain to come to the center and be quiet because it's going to reconnect to the center of the earth. It's much easier to go up and it's good to go up, but usually we need to focus a little more on going down. So just feel that your legs are relaxed, your belly is relaxed. You're breathing easily, your back is open, your neck is relaxed and open. And then slowly open your eyes. So we're connecting down and slowly coming up and opening up these wonderful areas. Uh, let's just just take one arm up and move it around a little bit. You may hear some creakings. And now we just try this. It's again this idea of contact and think of the cat and your hand. But just notice when you first hold your shoulder, the sensation will probably be more in your hand because your hand is very, very sensitive and has an enormous amount of potential power and experience in it. So see what you feel in your hand. I mean, it, your shoulder might feel warm, it might feel cold, it might feel hard. And just notice that first of all, and then just start to explore with your fingers Feel where the bony part is. Feel maybe some of those tendons that your fingers will bounce over, the long muscles that attach in. Feel around into the shoulder blade. So you're exploring and then we're going to notice how the shoulder feels about that. Get right inside your shoulder. And now just take your hand a little bit away. And let the shoulder feel from inside the presence of your hand. And you may notice that something drops, something relaxes a little bit as deep inside the shoulder. It's like every part of our body is a different creature and has to be met separately. So the shoulder is allowed now to feel the warmth of the hand, the energy of the hand. And then slowly, slowly make contact again and see if the shoulder is comfortable with that. 
and then see if the shoulder wants the hand to do anything. It might say, no, go away. It can happen. Our body parts have messages that they want to tell us and we don't listen to them usually. And if it says, no, I don't want the hand there, then you have to take it away, maybe try to come towards it in a different way. But the chances are it will say, yes, please give me a little nice massage. Ooh, that feels good. Squeeze me a little bit more. Oh, all around the back, up above the shoulder blade. Feel the shoulder blade if you can. It's such an interesting creature with its little spine that sticks out. Beautiful. And now just see if the shoulder wants to move a little bit. And then just stroke the shoulder gently and leave out through the arm and the hand. And just notice the two arms, the two shoulders, how they feel. And now from that awareness inside the shoulder, begin to move your arm again, like you did before, but you probably feel it in a whole different way. It doesn't mean that all the stiffness has gone away or maybe pain, but it will be different. There's more awareness, perhaps more freedom, more exploration in that arm and that shoulder. And then place it down. See if you feel the nostril on that side as more conscious of the breath. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Bring your hand onto your shoulder and just notice what the hand feels. Explore a little bit. Very interesting place. How the arm bone comes up, how the muscles are, the long tendons, you know, all the little soft places and the hard places. And then see if you can get inside and feel what the hand is doing from the inside and just how do you respond to that. The chances are it may relax. You may be letting go of stuff. We hold all kinds of people and responsibilities in our shoulders. And it's good to let them drop. And if the shoulder wants to move, move it around. And then explore it. So the shoulders are very loosely attached joints. That's why they have so much freedom, but <clears throat> they also can get really tied up. And a lot of people have pain in their shoulders because they work too hard with them. And it's, I think it's usually because we lose contact with the rest of the body. So if you take your hand up now on one side, doesn't matter which side, can you root, feel your rooting down right through the core of your body? You have made a lovely uh, <clears throat> base. You have grounded yourself on the floor. So that's down. And then feel the energy moving up. And so really the arm is not a separate entity. It's something from inside coming up. You could say it's energy, like trees have their roots in the earth. And then the energy comes up and moves through the trunk and out into the branches and then into the leaves and the flowers. So <clears throat> just see if you can feel now as you move your arm and explore a little more <clears throat> that the more you <clears throat> are grounded and connected to the earth, the freer your whole 
movement would be. And then you discover, oh, my arm doesn't start here. It's connected right down through my body, into my pelvis, into the roots in the earth. And then you try the same on the other side. Down to go up, down to go up. And so the exploration becomes a lot more fluid and fun. So, you know, when you have to do an asana and take your arms out to the side, what usually happens is we tighten up. But you don't need to do that. You can take your arms out to the side and just feel the energy continuing out. And holding it in a straight line becomes, or the danger is it becomes a military exercise where everything gets tighter and tighter unless you can feel the energy is moving from the earth down, from your body down into the earth and from the earth up and out through your arms. And as you hold them out, they're actually releasing and going further and further outwards as the joints open. As you take your arms up, you're rooting down for the energy to go up. And your arms are full of expression, full of gesture. So the whole sun salutation becomes very much a sort of military exercise up and down and then forward into dog pose and back and all that. But does it have to be that? You see, the sun doesn't really care what you do, but inside something cares. So if you go outside in the morning and you feel the warmth of the sun and you feel the beauty of the early morning, something inside starts to stir. It's something from the earth starts to come up and something else opens up. And everything in your body is involved, but there's no pose, there's no fixed position that you have to go into. It's simply the outcome of opening and receiving. And when you receive, this whole part of your body opens up. So just give this part of your chest a little tapping, just to wake it up, and then wait. And see if by becoming soft here, touch it very lightly with your fingers, you can feel something inside, like the little flowers in the springtime, pushing up to the surface. And it's that that opens. It's like little hands inside your chest are opening to receive, to receive. And then just take your fingers down your neck, stroke it gently, and bring your hands down. So we come up to the neck, and <clears throat> there's also a vulnerable place, a very vulnerable place. But what is nice, <clears throat> you make a little uh, support like that. You know, people who have broken the neck, they have to wear a collar like that so the neck can heal. So you do that. And the base of your skull at the back will rest on your little fingers and your uh, this part of your hand will be kind of just near the jawbone and the, underneath the ear. And then you can just roll around and let your arms go with it and begin to feel what happens in your neck. Is there any place where it collapses or squeezes, any place that feels tight? Let your jaw relax and move the jaw around, make funny shapes with your mouth. It'll all help to loosen this area. And you can guide with your hands so that you ease the side of the skull more up on one side 
or the other side and give a little more stretch to your neck your hands helping you but never letting the head fall too much backwards to crush the vertebra at the back And then gradually let go with your hands and just see what your head would like to do with your shoulders. If you roll the shoulders back, as you do that, you can bring the base of the neck forwards and then you go the other way. I wonder how many of you hear a lot of crunching sounds. I can't hear them. I can only hear my own. But um, this is something that the shoulders love, just rocking and rolling around. And it's like cleaning out, cleaning out a cupboard, you know, getting rid of all the little bits of dirt and stuff that tend to accumulate in your shoulders. Yeah. Go up to the ears and gently squeeze and pull a little bit from the top all the way down the outer rim of the ear. That's what feels good to you. You can pull a little more if you like. You can pull them out and around to the front. That's kind of a nice feeling because um, well, it opens up your, your hearing, of course, because <laughs> you're getting this wonderful cave-like experience, uh, like the seashell with the wave sounds. But also you're inviting the back of the head to widen. And when that happens, and you're pulling the ears out and a little bit forwards, you can withdraw back inside your head much more easily. If you pull the ears back the other way and push them towards the, your skull, you will find that you're pushed more outwards. So your front brain starts to be more active. Nothing wrong in that, but we're just trying to get a better balance. The back brain is much bigger than the front brain. So it needs its help. It needs a lot of help to recover its sense of power in its sense of um, being. Talk a lot more about that. But um, just for now, just feel even the gentlest pulling outwards and forwards helps the back of the head to soften and widen. And maybe then you feel your head is not so hard. It's almost as if you have opened up into the space around your head. And that's very important. Although we are working on arriving in the body, we are also beginning to experience that our life force, our feeling of living, goes beyond the body, beyond the physical body. It's still really the body. It's the warmth that comes out of you. It's the energy that surrounds you. So just for a few moments, uh, we've done quite a lot rolling around on the floor, coming up, going into a twist, working through the spaces, the shoulders, the neck. And we'll have just a little music in the background and um, explore anything that you want to do. And it could be you just want to lie down and digest it all. Or it could be you want to do something quite different, like a dog pose. But the idea is just to take what we've done and explore it in your own way a little further. So 
and you don't have to look at me because this is your exploration and you can close your eyes or have them open, doesn't matter. But taking into account that we are arriving in the body and we're finding that, you know, when you've been away from your house for a while, or if other people have lived in your house while you were away and you come back, it often feels not very happy. It's a bit, uh, it needs your love, it needs your, you to open the windows and the doors and bring it out. So that's what you're doing. Finding more spaces, more breath, more connections between the different places in your body. And you don't have to do the movements I did with you, you can do any other movements. What is really wonderful is when you discover a new part of yourself. You might have known it was there, but suddenly you realize there's a space underneath your knee that you hadn't discovered. Or there's a place in your shoulder that suddenly appears. lovely just just keep going and see what you are finding there's no expectation there's only discovery unwinding and opening and breathing and spaces new spaces and being able to stay somewhere and feel that something can open further discovering when your front brain jumps in and you lose that deep connection. find it takes you into one of your asanas or some particular stretch that you love to do but you start to find something new is happening in your body as you go into it you're more present in certain places there's more space When you feel you've done enough, just come back to a resting place. And notice what you feel now. You don't have to analyze it, you don't have to put words to it, but just notice what the experience in your body is. So I'd like just to go into a place that, uh, again, because we are upright creatures, uh, sometimes gets a little neglected and that's this area of the chest 
from the armpits down the rib cage. And if you take one arm up and just feel around and press until you feel a space between two ribs and notice if you find any tenderness there. It's quite possible because if we don't really breathe and move in all these different places in our body, they start to get a little bit clogged up. And so the tenderness just means that the blood isn't flowing so well or the lymph isn't flowing so well, or the muscles have got a little tight. And never be brutal, but you can always massage places or press gently into places that are tender. You can rub the whole area. And when you've done one side, don't do the other side yet. Just stop and feel, even just with 30 seconds or one minute of exploring and touching and moving and breathing in one side makes a huge difference. You start to feel that almost like you have gills, that lungs are able to breathe more into a bigger space. And when you open your arm up, you can feel now that you inside are expanding outwards on the side. And then you do the other side. I remember reading somewhere, I don't know whether it was a, a poem or an article that a man wrote about his lover. And um, I can't remember the words exactly, but the, the message that came over was that he was saying he has begun to realize that he is now in touch with this incredible landscape and it is a there is now ahead of him a whole lifetime of getting to know and exploring this landscape of her body. And I thought it was very beautiful at the time. And, but I realize now that our body is like a landscape and we need to do exactly that. Explore it, feel it. Find the different sensations, the different structures, the soft parts, the hard parts, the tender parts, and find out from the inside what the body is longing for. And I have found that by working on this area uh, under the arms and getting more breath there, I have much more, um, more of a bird-like feeling, almost like I have wings and um, it, it enables me to feel also that I can open out and embrace more. Because when we're closed in here, we live rather narrow lives and we tend to be more particular and critical and all that. But when we open this area here, you can't do that. It's really hard to be critical and um, irritable when you're breathing and opening out from the sides of your body. And I want to do something now just that is really good for the, um, for the thyroid, very important organ in the neck, and also for this area here. So you will need a block and, and a wall. And um, maybe I will, uh, I will show you first what we're going to do and then you can follow. Because you might jump into it immediately and think, oh, I know that. But um, there are a couple of things I want to point out that might um, just make it a little more interesting for you. So 
Um, I hope you can see. I'm going to come until my buttocks are almost uh, touching my heels. My toes are touching the wall. I take the block and then I put the feet on the wall and roll up. I put the block at an angle and you don't want too much of an angle or it'll fall, but the bottom part of the block is nearer towards your head. Personally, I like it on my lumbar spine because I have a particular problem there, but many people just want it on their pelvis. And wherever you put it, it will start to open up spaces between the bones in that area. So if I put it on the pelvis, I'm going to get more opening along the um, lower lumbar spine. If I put it a little higher up, I get more opening in the middle of the spine. So the trick is the tilting of the block and then rolling down over it. And you just have to find out what works for you. The next difficult part is to get the shoulders under. So I have to hold onto my mat just so that I could work my shoulders under and then stretch my arms out, interlock my fingers and roll my arms and shoulders down. So now the back ribs are coming up and the shoulder blades are traveling towards the block. And here I can roll down the upper arm and then open up more of this lovely space on the side of the breast and the side of the ribs and open it right up and get even more places to breathe in. I have to do one side at a time. And as well as that, I can do this one where I roll the shoulders down and roll the head from side to side opening the base of the neck up into the throat. And that really helps the thyroid and the neck. So have a go and I will repeat it and let's see if it's helpful. Get your block and get your pelvis over the block a little bit so that you tilt your buttock bones down and that will open up your chest and it will take your neck way off the floor, which is what you want. You don't want to jam your neck down into the floor like that. And when you interlock your hands behind the block and roll the arms outwards at the shoulder and down. So you open up the whole rib cage from the armpit into the sides of the chest. Now you can breathe into those areas. And if you focus more on one, you think of keeping one rooted into the ground, the arm rooted into the ground and the chest slowly separating from the arm and the arms slowly separating from the chest. And you could breathe more and more into that area. And then into the other side. Roll the, out, the arm out and down. Rooting it down, you can separate the chest from the arm that is rooted to the ground. And create more space between your arm and the ribs and breathe into that. And when you're back in the center, just tilt your chin up so that the base of your neck moves up into your throat, but roll the shoulder blades down and keep the arms on the floor. And then just roll the head slowly to one side and then to the other side, you may get some little clicking sounds, but all wonderful for the thyroid and the neck and shoulders. Okay. 
When you come down, bend the knees and you just move, slide the block slowly away towards the floor so that you're then resting on just the nearest part of the block. And then you bring your knees towards you. The block will probably start to tilt up a little bit. That doesn't matter. But this gives you an opportunity to breathe into and widen and lengthen the lower back because it's not on the floor. The lower back, your lower back is now suspended between the block and the floor. And so when you bring your knees towards you, you can breathe deeply into that part of your back. And that part of our back needs our power. It needs the breath so badly. So this is arriving inside when you can feel your own power through the breath, creating more space, more, uh, what shall I say, more power on the inner walls, the inner walls of the body. When you take the block out, just rest for a moment, feeling the outcome of what you have been doing and just in any way you want. Something that is very nice to do is to hold your head up again, roll to one side, open up that side of the chest that is off the ground, and then come back. So you kind of walk your rib cage away from your pelvis, and then you just let your head slowly down, giving it a little traction so the neck lengthens. Roll over in whatever way you like. And just do one stretch, whatever stretch you feel like doing. Maybe one of the ones we've been doing with the breathing and the twisting, or maybe a nice dog pose. If you're in the dog pose, you want to see how high your pelvis can fly. And see if you can, from the inside of your pelvis now, widen out the hips. And feel the whole back of the pelvis beautifully open and wide. And then just see if you can play around a little bit, bending the knees so you mobilize your spine like the waves of the sea, or like a snake. Let your neck become part of it. Imagine you have a long tail, like a monkey, reaching up to hold onto a branch behind you. And then come down. And slowly turn to your right and let your right hand touch the floor behind you just as a stabilizer and the left hand over your right knee. This enables you to open the outer edge of your right thigh if you think of the thigh bone moving out of the hip as you hold the knee back. And that's a lovely stretch for this area, but it also then is a stabilizer for you to rise up 
and turn a little further. And those of you who've worked with me before, remember the back body. You're going to widen the back body and feel that the left kidney is coming towards your left hand on the right knee and the right kidney is moving towards your right elbow. And just breathe into that. And then think about your left buttock bone rooting down. That will turn you a little bit back again. Keep that rooting down through your left buttock bone and with the kidneys at the back, turn a little further to your right. Breathe and come back. And then go to the other side. The left hand is behind you, the right hand on your left knee. Think of the left hip uh, thigh bone moving out of its hip socket as you hold onto the left knee. And now widen the kidneys and the right kidney comes towards your right hand and the left kidney towards your left elbow. And then return a little bit to anchor down through your right buttock bone. Rise up and one more turn from the kidneys. Breathe. And then come back. And then just prepare yourself to lie down. In whatever way feels good to you with something under your head if you want a blanket over you <clears throat> so we started on the ground and we finish on the ground but this time you probably will be aware of how you want to make sure that your body in the, the back of your body is wide and long. So as you place yourself down, any of those little moves we did to open up the back of the chest or the pelvis at the back, or even in the head, opening out with your fingers, you can just gently support and widen the back of your skull. And then when you reach out your legs, just wiggle them a little bit to loosen anything. Put your hands on your groins. So this area needs a lot of comfort where the legs join in. See if you can feel deep down in the area of your groins <clears throat> that they're receiving the healing warmth of your hands. And then you can put your hands anywhere else your body feels the need maybe your belly or your heart, or maybe you prefer to have the arms on the floor. And we're just going to drop and drop and drop back until we experience the breath rising from the ground rising up towards the front of the body and subsiding again back into the earth. So little by little, more and more places in your body feel they can let go, they can trust, they can trust the ground and this coming back and down into the earth 
is a great healer. But it takes time. But you can move around inside your body and just focus on one place, letting it know that the ground is waiting for it. The earth is waiting. Waiting to receive us. And we learned how to receive in our bodies, how to receive the breath, and now how to be received, how to be received by the ground. 